Hey, it's Okie Dingo. So today I'm going to bring you an unboxing and review of the Brook PS4 Wireless Adapter Marine. This is one of the newest back button adapters that has hit the market. So let's get into the unboxing. Alright, so here we have the front of the box which shows off the Marine adapter. And when you get it in certain light right there, you can see the outline of a DualShock 4. So that's a nice little design feature of the box. So here's the title, the PS4 Wireless Adapter Marine. So as you see, it adapts a PS4 DualShock to a PS4, PS3, Switch, Android, PC, Mac, and iOS. All right, so here's the bottom of the box, which uh, gives you QR code for the website. You have the uh, seal of authenticity right there. Here's the side of the box, uh, top of the box, then the other side of the box, and then we get to the back, which has some information. So the wireless uh, Marine has seven features. So it can be used wireless and wired. It supports turbo and remapping. It has a replaceable 18650 battery. It has an audio function, so it has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. It supports motion control for the PS4 and Switch. There's four extra removable customizable buttons, so those are the paddles that you saw on the back of the adapter. And it supports multi-platform. So what that means is there's a dial on the top of this adapter and you can switch it to whatever platform you want. So PS4, PS3, Switch, Mac, PC, Android. And whatever button combination or uh, customization you have on the paddles is going to stay per which console you select. So if I have my button layout with X on one paddle and circle on another paddle on PS4, and then on Switch I want it to be something else, whenever I turn that dial it's going to remember what my settings were, which is really nice. So, uh, as you see down here, it tells you what is included. So, the marine adapter, the uh, two bottom button or paddles, two top paddles, a user guide, and a locking tool. And then there's a note right here. So, before using this product, you must install an 18650 battery. So, there's two versions of this uh, kit one comes with a battery and one comes without. So, this is the one that comes without the 18650, and you just have to supply that yourself. So I do want to talk about the 18650 just for a second. So there are two different versions. So this is one that I picked up, and it's another one that I picked up. They are both 18650s, however, they are both different from each other. So this is an 18650 that is meant for a flashlight. You see it has a button top, and there's a little extra section up here. This is an 18650 which is meant for a like a vape device. This is the one that you need to have. This is the one you don't want. So as you see, they are uh, different sizes. So the flashlight one is a little bit taller and it has a button top. This one is flat. So when you get your 18650, I suggest you either uh, get the kit that comes with one or you go to a uh, vape store. So any store that sells vaporizers are gonna sell these batteries and ask for an 18650 and they will give you the right kind. All right, so let's open it up. So there's kind of some two little pull tabs here, just pull it out. I really like this uh, design choice for the box. It's like a schematic, so it shows you the side, uh, and all, you know, what's on the side, the back, the front, another side shot, top shot, bottom shot, and then the battery. I think it's kind of nice the uh, the way it looks. Then on the back side is just showing you where the paddles go. Let's open it up. And here we have the adapter on this side. Put that off to the side. You have all your paddles. You kind of need to lean it forward a little bit. Then you can just pull them all out. All right, and then on this side we have the user guide. Put this aside. And inside the user guide, 
you have a sticker and then uh, this piece that fell out. So this is um, for the adapter, there's a coin slot and you'll use this to turn it on. So I like that they included this. Um, if you didn't have this, you could also use a coin, but it's nice to use, to use plastic on plastic instead of metal so you don't get any marks on it. Put that off to the side for just one moment. So this is the user guide that they include. Uh, there's some product information. It's going to run uh, through again all the features of this, uh, of the switch um, that's on top of the adapter. All the status LEDs and what they mean, how to install the kit on the controller, and how to replace the batteries, and then the firmware update and the user guide. So the first thing you want to do uh, with this adapter is to set it up. So right here there's uh, two push buttons on either side. Just push them in and open up the battery cover. So let's go ahead and put the battery in first. And as I mentioned, make sure you get a vaporizer battery. So this one is a Samsung INR18650. So it should be a flat top, not a button top. All right. Then just like any battery, this is negative, this is positive. So put it in. All right, then next, the way the paddles go in, they made it pretty much foolproof. So as you see, these paddles have a little hole in the top and that corresponds to these top spots that have the hole in the top as well. So you just stick it in, put it in place. Get the other side, stick it in, put it in place. So then as you see, these bottom ones have a side cutout, which corresponds to the adapter. Hopefully you can see that that has a side cutout. Put the battery in, or put the paddle in. Put the other paddle in. And then we can put our battery cover on. And then push down. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is grab our DualShock 4. Have right here. And we want to take this off. Like so. And then this is the micro SD, which goes into the top of the, the DualShock 4. Um, just have to line it up. There we go. Then the next thing you want to do is, as you see, this has the, um, the mic port and the accessory port, or extension port, which are right here on the controller. Just slide that in, push those in. Then as you see, now the screw hole is going to be lined up. And we will just put the screw in. So you might need to uh, just push this in just a little bit more. There we go. And then screw it in. All right, yep, so there it is. It is fully installed, as you see. And now we have bottom buttons and top buttons. And uh, since this has its own battery, it also adds battery life to the controller. So what it does is it's uh, pretty much just constantly charging the controller as you're using it with that battery. All right, so I have found uh, two different ways that I like to use these uh, back buttons. Um, you're kind of kind of develop the way that you feel more comfortable, but you can either use the bottom buttons with your middle fingers and then use this portion of your finger to hit the top buttons and just kind of push in because they do actuate uh, very easily. So there's that way, or you can also just use your middle fingers and slide up. But for me, I feel um, a little bit unbalanced on the controller while I'm using it. If I was using, let's say, uh, the middle finger on the top paddle and using the trigger because they're pretty close, so you're a little bit off balance. So I found that it's just easier just to rock that middle finger to use the top ones. Now, personally, I don't normally use um, four triggers in games. I really like the bottom ones is what I normally use. So um, if I do use the top ones, it's normally just to kind of scroll through a, a menu item. So all right, the first thing you need to do, which is the same with any Brook adapter, is you want to update it. 
So let's go over to the PC and I will run you how to do the firmware update on the Brook Marine adapter. Alright, so here we are over at the Brook Accessories website and this is the full overview and features of the Marine adapter. I will have this link down in the description so you can run through this page. Um, it's going to go through all everything and then if you scroll down right here, you're also going to be able to download the complete manual on how to use this adapter. All right, so let's do the update. So what you want to do is up top, you'll see this tab called download. Go ahead and click that. Then you're going to find your adapter. So right here we have the P4 adapter series. So click on that. Then the version number is going to be right here and it's going to be the latest version. You can find out exactly um, what was changed for the version. So this one, it fixed the connection problem with iOS 13. So go ahead and download either if you have a PC or if you have a Mac. And then once it's done downloading, what we're going to do is we're going to open it up and extract the zip file. All right, so we open it up and we're going to hit extract. I'm going to choose next. In here, you might also get a warning when running this um, from your antivirus or Windows Defender. Um, go ahead and just accept and run it. It is safe, I promise you. So we'll double click this. We'll go to PS4 adapter. And then there's our warning right here. It's just saying that it's an unrecognized app. So pretty much it's not from the Microsoft App Store. That's why we get this warning. Hit more info and hit run anyways. All right, so here is the firmware updater. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna follow the steps. So what it wants us to do is get a USB cable, plug it into your PC, and then plug that into the top of the adapter. All right, which I just did. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I have the selector wheel turned over to the icon that it shows, which is kind of like a uh, circle with an arrow. Then once we do that, we're going to push the middle button, which is they call the brook button. So I just did that. And then now I'm going to hit next. So as it says, do not remove the converter and that is updating. All right, so the next step is to turn it to P4. And then once again, you're going to hit that button on the top, the Brook button. And then now the firmware is successfully updated. It says complete. Now we can hit finish. And my controller also turned on. All right, so now I can unplug it. And what we're gonna do is first go over to the PS4 and I'll show you how to sync it up. All right, so once we have the adapter installed and we've run the update, the next thing we need to do is sync the adapter to the PlayStation. You only have to do this the first time you use the adapter on a certain console. So what you wanna do is get your DualShock 4 with the adapter installed. And as you see, I am in P4 mode. So there is a line pointing to P4. And then we'll get our micro USB, stick it in the top of the Brook adapter, which will turn the adapter on. And then if we look on the PS4, our controller has synced. So from there, we can remove the micro USB and now the controller is fully synced to the PlayStation. All right, so next I'm gonna show you how to remap the paddles on the back of the adapter. I'm gonna move away from the screen real quick so I don't have focusing issues. So here is our controller with the Brook adapter attached and you see the blue light is on so it is synced and working. To go into remapping mode, what you wanna do is hold Option and the PS button. You're gonna get two strong vibrations as you heard and the light is gonna go out. So next I wanna select the paddle that I want to map. So if I wanna map this bottom paddle right here, I'm going to click it and I get two soft vibrations. 
Next, you have to hold share, and then you hit the button that you want to map to that paddle. So I'm going to map cross, so I will hold share and press cross, and I get one light vibration. Next, you have to hit option, which is going to set it, and you get one strong vibration. So from here, you could exit map mode, or you could map any other um, paddles. So I'll map this paddle as well, so I'm going to push it. The two light vibrations, hold share hit circle, one soft one, hit option, one hard vibration, and then next to get out of mapping mode you want to hit the uh, PS button. You'll get two strong ones and then you see your light came back on. So let's go back up to the PlayStation. And now since I put the buttons to cross and circle, <clears throat> Those will be to select. So uh, if I go here, for me, I'm on a Japanese PlayStation, so I'm going to hit circle, which would be this paddle. As you see, I can hit it. So now I can use this paddle for jumping and this one for circle. So hopefully you can see that. And my character is moving. There's no lag. There's nothing like that. It's working absolutely perfect. So yeah, now if I wanted to go over to, uh, let's say my Nintendo Switch, it's exactly the same. Make sure the controller's off. You're going to then be in, um, you know, for Switch, you're gonna be in NS, so Nintendo Switch. You're gonna plug in the USB, and then from there you can unplug it, and then you can map the paddles how you want for the Switch. So the configuration stay depending on what system. So if I am in P4 mode, whatever button and um, paddle configuration I have, that is going to stay for P4. If I go over to Switch, which is NS, those can be independent. So they, they will not be the same and they will not override each other. So I think that's a really nice feature. So it's the same for any of the other ones. If you want to be on Android, uh, iOS, PS3, they can all have their own configurations. So yeah, the um, as you see, the adapter works just fine. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. All right, so let's go over and uh, just give some final thoughts on this adapter. All right, so here's my final thoughts on the Brook Marine adapter. I've been using it for about a week. I recently just got back into Destiny, so I was using it on that um, yesterday, and before that I was using it in some RPGs. So for me, I normally uh, only really need the bottom two buttons, but I did find the top buttons nice to just kind of go left and right through menus. Um, I played a little bit of Horizon, so it was good to cycle through the items uh, with the top button and then the bottom ones to use like a jump and crouch and whatnot. So I do need to talk about the weight of this adapter because as you can see, it is um, fairly bulky. So the weight of the normal DualShock 4 is 215 grams. The adapter with the battery adds 115 grams. So on long sessions, I did notice um, I was getting some kind of hand fatigue because the controller is uh, a bit heavier now. So that is something over time you might get used to, the weight of the controller. But uh, just do understand that it does add some weight to the controller. So I really like the feature that you can use the same controller on all the different devices uh, just for continuity. So if you like the way this controller feels, you can use the same controller across all your devices and it's just going to feel more natural instead of having to keep switching to, you know, like the um, Nintendo Switch style Pro Controller or, you know, or using something else on your Android or your Mac. So now you can just use the same device across all of them. So uh, as I said before, it does come in a battery and battery less version. So the battery version on US Amazon is $59.99 and the battery less version is $45.99. So it is priced really well. Um, I had to buy the battery separate, and the battery was, I believe, like $12. So either kit that you decide on, the battery kit or the battery list kit, uh, the price is essentially the same. So it's nice that you have the option 
because of, uh, like I said, where I live in Japan, I'm on an island, and this would have shipped via boat if it had the battery installed, but since it didn't, it was able to come airmail, and I got it in a couple days. So yeah, I do need to mention that this was given to me by Brooke to do the review. However, this review is totally unbiased, and it is my personal thoughts on this device. So yeah, I hope you liked the video. If you have any questions about it, please leave them below. I will get to every question that is asked. If you are not already, please subscribe to my channel and like the video if you liked it. All right, thanks and see you in the next review.